55 KRC. This is the morning show. Uh, Brian is off today. I'm Jerry Thomas. Brian will be back tomorrow. And uh, I've been looking forward to this uh, conversation all morning long. We have the Ohio treasurer with us here, Josh Mandel. Josh, good morning to you. Good morning, Jerry. How you doing? I'm doing fine. First off, I want to thank you for your service. I know you were in the service. You were a Marine, were you not? Uh, yes, uh, I served in the Marine Corps, did a couple tours in Iraq, and uh, was uh, proud to have my opportunity to do my small part, but uh, appreciate even more so the uh, men and women who came before me who paved the way for some guys like me to, uh, you know, to have the opportunity to wear the uniform. Separate five, and I, again, want to thank you for your service. Now, you're running for the office uh, of uh, Senator uh, against Sherrod Brown, who is the incumbent and I, I've noticed that the FBI has gotten involved in investigations of contributions, and they're investigating you, and they're investigating another Republican. And is it just coincidence, Josh, that two Republicans are being investigated by the FBI at one time, or what's what's the deal with that? Well, I'm sure they're out there doing their job, and they have an important job to do. And uh, it's important to note that. Uh, you know, they are not investigating the other congressmen or me, uh, to our knowledge. Uh, their investigation is of uh, folks who uh, gave contributions, and we have no knowledge of them doing anything wrong. Hopefully these folks did nothing wrong. Out of an abundance of caution, we gave those uh, contributions back, um, and, uh, you know, respect that uh, you know, folks have a job uh, to do, uh, you know, who work for the, uh, for, work for the government. But, uh, you know, we put that behind us, gave uh, those donations back, and are really focused uh, moving forward on beating Sherrod Brown. Uh, Sherrod Brown and I are two very different people. Uh, he has uh, been running for political office since Richard Nixon was president. He's been in Washington for uh, two decades, and uh, we believe if he was the answer, our problems would have been solved long ago. Uh, I've never lived in Washington, never worked in Washington. I uh, believe that uh, both Democrats and Republicans, uh, some of the folks there have screwed things up over uh, many decades and many generations. And I think Sherrod Brown is a big part of the problem. And in order to change Washington, we got to change the people we send there. And as I travel the state of Ohio, here in Cincinnati area, but frankly throughout the state, I keep hearing that folks want a new generation of leaders to step up. Uh, they want leaders in Washington who look a little different, sound a little different, feel a little different, think a little differently, and have the backbone and guts to stand up to political bosses on both sides of the aisle. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go there, shake that place up, and come back and uh, live the rest of my life here in the state of Ohio. I have no plans whatsoever to spend the rest of my life in Washington uh, like it seems like Sherrod Brown has done for the past many decades. Well, Josh, you change things. You, what you're talking about change, and, and, and a lot of people would agree, and I'm one of them, but they, things in politics need to be changed as well. Uh, yesterday, Wisconsin, a big election uh, with, with Scott Walker and, and a recall election, which he won handily. He, he beat uh, Barrett, uh, by a greater margin than he did in 2010, which ought to tell you something. But the very day the polls opened up, there came a smear campaign out that Scott Walker fathered an illegitimate love child. I mean, and it was all BS. It, it, this is what politics has come to, and it isn't serving anybody in the United States well, I think. What's your feeling on that? Uh, I think you hit the uh, nail on the head. I mean, it's, it's interesting. Uh, sure, Brown's been in politics for 38 years, and his first two TV advertisements out of the box were completely negative. And we asked the question, you know, for someone who's been running for office since Richard Nixon was president and has been in Washington for two decades, doesn't Sheriff Brown have at least one good thing to say about his record? And the answer <laughs> seems to be no. Uh, and so we started off our campaign completely positive with the first positive advertisement talking about my blue-collar roots and uh, Marine Corps values, a second advertisement uh, talking about uh, the fact that I'm not going to get pushed around uh, by uh, political bosses or lobbyists in D.C. And now we have a third advertisement on TV uh, that paints a contrast between me and him and really accentuates the uh, strong results we have in the treasurer's office. We are in the highest credit rating on the $4 billion investment fund I managed there in the office. Uh, that was from Standard & Poor's. Right around the same time that S&P downgraded the outlook for the United States for the first time in American history, uh, we are in the highest credit rating uh, from Fitch on the bonds. We managed right around the same time they downgraded the U.S. as well. 
Our liquidity portfolio is up about $2.3 billion since the day we took office. Uh, we navigated the European sovereign debt crisis, not only without a loss, but actually with a yield on behalf of taxpayers. And we've done it all while uh, tightening our belts and trimming the, bid, trimming the budget. And uh, we believe we're running one of the most effective and efficient state treasury offices in America. And it contrasts uh, in a very stark fashion to the unfortunate mess in Washington, D.C., where these bozos haven't even uh, passed a budget for 1,100 days, uh, let alone uh, a balanced budget. Uh, well, you mentioned the, uh, the highest credit rating, and, and it is true, and you're, you should be uh, uh, admired for that and doff of the hat to you for that. And I think, and I wonder if you concur that the election we I just talked about with Scott Walker is going to give everybody else in government, whether it's federal, state, local, doesn't matter where you are, some I, a good push, I think, to become fiscally conservative and start cutting the spending down, don't you? I do. I, mean, I think, uh, you know, it was definitely a, a big win in uh, Wisconsin last night, and uh, I think it will motivate strong leadership throughout the, uh, throughout the country. Uh, here's the reality. We can no longer afford as a country to spend at the rate that the federal government is spending. I mean, the, the, the federal government has taken us to a place, politicians in Washington have taken us to a place where our federal debt exceeds our GDP, it exceeds our entire American economy. That is not a responsible place to be. And over the past two decades, politicians like Sherrod Brown and others have borrowed around $1 trillion from the People's Republic of China. Uh, it's morally wrong, it's, it's fiscally irresponsible, and today, every baby that's born in America, we welcome them to our country, and uh, politicians in Washington drop a bill in their crib and say, welcome to our country, welcome to the world. Uh, you, you happen to owe, upon arrival, tens of thousands of dollars, and, oh, by the way, you owe a good portion of that to the People's Republic of China. Uh, that's, that's just not the right message to send to uh, newborns uh, in America. Uh, and I think it's, it's a moral issue as well as an economic issue, and we need to get the fiscal house in order in Washington. And, you know, as I travel the state, I hear it from Democrats, Republicans, and independents, especially throughout uh, here in southwest Ohio, that they feel, to, they feel that the politicians in Washington are living by one set of rules, mm -hmm. while all of us are living by a different set of rules. And I think it's one of the reasons why um, their, you know, Sherrod Brown has such a high unfavorability rating, uh, and it's also one of the reasons why Congress's approval rating is around the lowest in American history. And he's in the Senate, and, and they can't even get Reed to address things that come from the House to help cut the spending. And, and they know as well as I do, because I'm looking at the same thing that they look at in the Senate. The CBO, we're talking about their own organization here, said the United States cannot compute how the American economy could continue to exist beyond the year 2035 at the current level of spending. Hey, it, it, we're talking 23 years from today. That child you talked about would barely get out of college when we're out of business. It's, uh, it's scary. I mean, the numbers are very scary. And listen, I'm bullish on Ohio. I'm bullish on America. I think we can turn the ship in a better direction. Um, I think, you know, we can uh, be that economic and moral leader in the world. But in order to do it, we need new leaders in Washington. We can't keep trying to put a square peg into a round hole and expect that it's going to fit. Uh, we need a new generation of leaders in Washington. And these folks uh, who are just off the reservation liberal and have been there for decade after decade after decade uh, need to be shown the door. Uh, and I'm sure uh, some of them are uh, nice people, and I'm sure some of them are rotten people, and there's probably a, a mixture in between. But the reality is um, they haven't done a good job for our country. So your, uh, your uh, advice to Sherrod Brown is that it's time after 38 years to go about your life's work, and it ain't a politics. Yeah, I and mean, I think for Sherrod Brown, 38 years is enough. The guy's been running for political office since Richard Nixon was president, since Elvis was king. Um, I mean, think, anyone listening here throughout the Cincinnati area, think about what you were doing 38 years ago. Uh, this guy's been running for political office for 38 years, and uh, enough's enough. You know, it's time to uh, allow a new generation to uh, step up to the plate. And listen, I have a strong respect for the past as well as the vision for the future. I'm a younger guy. I'll be 35 by election day. Um, and, uh, you know, I... I 
I'm doing this uh, because uh, I was inspired by my grandparents. Uh, my, uh, none of my grandparents had a college degree. Uh, one of them uh, was a U.S. Army Air Corps veteran. Uh, one of them was liberated by Allied troops. Um, two of my grandparents were uh, union laborers. One worked at a brass factory for over 30 years. The other worked um, as, as a clerk at a drugstore. And these were very simple people, hardworking, put in the sweat, and uh, they appreciated the freedom they had here in this country. And uh, they inspired me to join the Marine Corps inspired me to want to serve my community and country in this respect and uh, you know um, in blessed memory I think of them all the uh, all the time and I know they would be uh, a concern of the path of our country right now and they'd be saying listen we need some fresh blood in there and as I travel the Cincinnati area um, as I travel anywhere in southwest Ohio and frankly throughout the state I hear that over and over and over again Jerry we need some fresh blood in Washington in order to change that place we got to change the people we send there well you've got that right and and, uh, I, I, you know, and, and it's been, uh, it's growing, the feeling that you just expressed there. It's been growing all over the United States. And, and Wisconsin, we've been talking about earlier this morning, pretty much all morning, is, is proof of that. But, Josh, I wish you well. You, you have a website if people want to look more into your background and so forth? Uh, yes, our website is uh, jobs.joshmandel.com. We actually deleted the www from the website, and we replaced it with the word jobs. So just type in jobs.joshmandel.com, and you can visit our website. The reason we put the word jobs there is because we have a, a, a real focus on turning this uh, economic ship around. And in order to do that, we need leaders who are focused on creating an, env an environment for private sector job creation. And uh, I'm laser being focused on doing that and limiting uh, regulation out of Washington, lowering taxation, uh, getting the federal government out of the way. Sherrod Brown and others think that Washington is the uh, answer. I happen to think that Washington is the problem. And the best thing we can do to put people back to work to ensure that there's job security and upward mobility for uh, people who currently have jobs and uh, uh, ensure that we'll be strong economically into the future is to get Washington out of the way and allow the private sector talent, ingenuity, innovation to uh, take hold like it has uh, in Southwest Ohio for such a long time. Well, well said, my friend, and much luck to you. We'll talk again, and Brian, I'm sure we'll be around to talk to you with you as well, and good luck in the election in November. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Josh? You know, I, I uh, don't know much about Josh Mandel. But I know a lot about Sherrod Brown, and Sherrod Brown is a wingnut, wingnut liberal. He's just out of his mind. He won't listen to a damn thing you say to him. He ignores it just like uh, And uh, there's a guy running as an independent on a conservative ticket against uh, Josh Mandel and Sherrod Brown. But I'm sorry, man. When people jump into a race like this, they, they lose the Republican nomination. So they go and they try to get it anyway. Your head is like really, really big. And uh, if you want to help put Sherrod Brown back into office, go ahead and run against Josh Mandel. Uh, but, uh, you know, you're thinking about yourself and not your country. I don't care how conservative or whatever you think you are. Uh, why don't you just turn around and say, I'm voting for Josh Mandel. Um, and get Sherrod Brown out of there because I cannot stand the guy and I cannot stand the idea of him being staying in there another six years oh yeah and uh, I can't stand the GOP as much as I can't stand Sherrod Brown look what's happened over the last uh, you know uh, six months of primaries uh, in every state every state has a little Republican dictator that goes in and totally blocks the true people that want Ron Paul into office. And uh, they're just showing that they're just as deceitful and just as corrupt and just as bad as the Democratic Party. But we have to change this stuff in little baby steps, two years and four years at a time. We can't do it all today. Sherrod Brown, I hope to God you're history because you're a nut job.